Hey, Fitzy here, back again. Got the old girl primed. Not a lot to be excited about, but uh, it's a slow process. I got it done. So uh, stick around. I'll walk you through what I got done to get her to this point. Enjoy. Okay, I got her all sanded down finally. Oh my, love sanding. Anyway, let's have a look, see what I got done. All right, as you can see, I got her all sanded down. What I did is uh, this primer, I blocked it off at 180 first and then went over the whole car again uh, with 220, getting ready for the next coat of primer. I, I like to prime vehicles twice, I've always been that way. And uh, I got a few uh, dents I got to repair. I had a little incident here in garage one day and two things struck the hood here. And I got a couple of small imperfections. One here. And I got another one right here. As well as I think there's uh, a small dent over here on this quarter panel. I got to mix up a bit of filler now and uh, put some filler in them and get them ready. And then I'm going to start taping it up. And get it ready for uh, a coat of primer. Oh yes, I got to fill the firewall too, so that's got to be filled as well in there. So uh, let's get filling. I put my share of this on over the years. If uh, you don't know, I've been doing a lot of fabrication on this um, YouTube page, but I'm a bodyman by trade, and. Uh, I've done a lot of restorations. I had a shop at one point where I restored uh, antique cars. I uh, semi retired from that, I'd say. I'm just around playing around with the metal work now. I enjoyed that. The body work end of it was never fun. I never found I made any amount of money off it because there's so much work and to charge customers. Right? So, and this filler, boy, did I ever put some of this on over the years. When you're doing old restorations and old cars, a lot of fabrication work on it, uh, you can't be afraid of this stuff. You gotta know how to put it on. You can't be afraid to put it on. There's nothing wrong with uh, putting filler on a car. A lot of people figure this day and age, you could buy every panel for a car and as well that on as be done. But back in the 80s and the early 90s when I was at it, um, it was like you repaired everything. Like if you had a fender that was beat up, you didn't buy a fender for it because you couldn't find one for it. So you repaired the fender and filled it. So. <clears throat> Taught us a lot. Taught me a lot. But, uh, let's get this put on.
So I finally got her all ready. Let's have a look at her now and uh, see what I get done here. As you can see, she's all primed. I got her taped up. I got the firewall all done and filled and sanded. And I got them few spots all sanded on her. He's here, they're all ready. She's all ready now for primer. So that's what I'm going to get ready to put on her now. Another coat of primer. So I'm going to show you that now, the product that I got. Um, I've been using this, I found this, um, I'd say a couple of years ago. A friend of mine put me onto it. It was by accident I found it. Biggest problem I got with primers is um, <clears throat> is finding they came here in Canada. They came in with low VOCs, and what that ended up doing, that ended up taking a lot of the pigment out of the primers. They're very thin. They're great for modern cars doing just like you know small dent repair and stuff like that. But if you got an all over with a lot of repairs and everything on it, you're looking for a nice high build primer. It's hard to find, right? So, um, I came across this. This is not what you call an automotive primer. It's Interseal 670 HS. This is stuff they use on pipelines. And boats and stuff like that. Uh, what I like about it, there's a couple of things about it I like. When I'm doing cars, there's certain things I look for in primer. One of the first things I like to have, and I'll show you here now. I'll open this up. And you don't always have it. In most primers. If you can't stand a stick up in your primer like that, well then to me it's not a good high, a good high build primer for doing anything with. Now there's a couple of issues that you come with. This comes with a real real nice activator, it's almost like molasses. Um, this and this comes together as a package. Now you can see it's blue, that's the colour was on the car. I'm painting the car blue and that's the reason why I'm doing it. Uh, this is another cool feature with this primer. This is a list of colors that you can get this tinted in. So, like, you know, if you're building a rat rod or something and you just want to put a, a semi gloss or a flat finish on it, but you like to have some protecting, put one of these colors on it. To change it and pick one of these, which is very cool. And it's great for a value shade for whatever color where we're doing the car blue. I want to put a value shade on it of blue. Now, um, this is also. Got rust inhibitor and built into it, so you don't need an etch primer on it. This is direct to metal primer. Um, there's a couple of things about it that uh, I also checked into and looked in. I'm going to show you one. One is called bridging. One of the problems I've had over the years with primers is when you put them on a car, they bridge. And what I'm going to explain this to you now, I'm going to grab a pen here and show it to you. Bridging is when you apply primer on a vehicle, like this here, this is the vehicle. This would be your scratches, say your 180 scratches in the car, or any body work or something like this. And then you put a load of primer over the top of it, and eventually it'll, what it'll do, it'll bridge. In other words, this here will go in. And how you can see this is when you prime your vehicle, after you put three coats of primer on it, if you could still see your body work, it's it's not bridging, but if you covers up all your bodywork and like all your scratches and everything disappear, you're going to run into it. So, if you got this going on, right, your primer should be like this on the car. Now that's a bit exaggerating because when you cut it down, it should be cut down flat and everything. But that's what you're looking for. I've run into problems over the years that you have a primer and you put it on the car, and uh, it would. Uh, it bridged, so when, when it was all primed, you, it looked perfect. You'd almost be able to scuff it and, and go. You couldn't see none of the bodywork on it. When I applied this primer that I had on this here, every spot on this car where I had bodywork done on the car, I could see all the rings and everything sunk in around it because I knew that it wasn't bridging, so it was good quality that way. Now, another big issue that you have with some primers is shrinkage, okay? People wonder about shrinkage. It's not something that happens overnight and stuff like that. I have here, this here is from seven months ago. Okay, that's about, I say, a quarter of an inch thick down in the bottom of this container. That's the primer that's on her now. Okay, I've never seen it like this. I've seen it pull away from the sides. Now it's cracking in there. That's where I've been picking up the can and squishing it on the sides of the can. But it does not shrink at all. It's amazing. It blows my mind how well this stuff stays. Now the drawback with these, this stuff, is the drying time. Uh, it's not something that you put on a vehicle and uh, 
leave it overnight and then come out the next day and sand it. It's going to need a few days for drying. I find it's takes it's drying time is slow. I'll leave it for a week and it's usually best kind or three or four days or whatnot, right? Um, it's sanding qualities, all that is really good on it. Uh, the problem you're going to have with this, what I run into with this one here, is if you leave it on a vehicle too long, uh, it may be hard, it is harder to sand. It still sands, but it's still harder to sand. Not as easy as regular primer because the stuff goes really, really hard, which I find is great. You can't wash it off at dinners, which is another good quality on, on primers. Most primers, if you can wash them off at dinners, you're going to run into issues with the top coats, your base clears, and the reducers from your, uh, your clears and stuff like that will bite down underneath the top surfaces and bite into this material and soften it up but it's, it can't because the stuff is so hard right now here's why i use it okay i tripped over this and couldn't believe it this stuff was sixty dollars a gallon activated when i was buying it i've done a couple of cars with it now and totally amazed at how cheap it is sixty dollars um activated that's with this and this that's what it was. It's gone up a bit now since then. I bought this the other day and for some reason I'm looking into it now because I find it strange. This here and this here cost me 95 bucks today. And so I'm looking into that to find out what's going on with that. But eh, still not. It's under $100 with the activator. Um, I've, I've always used cheaper lines of products. I've, that's just me. I just can't justify spending a lot of money on materials on a car. I just, I just can't. I'm always been a low budget guy. Everything I do from paintwork to building cars, I do them on a budget. Um, this stuff is uh, probably the cheapest and the most amazing primer that I've, I've come across in years for doing this. It just blows my mind. So I'm gonna go ahead now and mix this up and put it on the car. And we'll get that done, much done. So I hope I was a bit of, a bit of help there. There is the uh, primer again. It's uh, pretty cool stuff. Anyway, let's get priming. Well, done with that. There she is. All in primer. The hood done as well. That's it for this now. I'll uh, block that off at 400 and I'll be ready for paint. Uh, next on the agenda, I'm going to get all this prepped in here 
and uh, do all this in sat black for the engine bay. Also, my plan is I got to uh, come around over here and I got to get inside the doors, get all that done, get the dash prepped, um, get all them. I got the inner panels. I'm going to be painting all them because they were all done in dark blue and they're supposed to be done in a light blue. And inside the trunk, the bottom of the trunk lid and the bottom of the hood. I'll get all that prepped and primed and get it all ready for paint. So that'll be it for this one. I uh, hope you weren't too bored. But that's it. That's what it is when it comes to uh, doing bodywork on cars. It's not exciting. It's just time consuming. So... Anyway, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. You never fell asleep. And until next time.